Initially, I was going to talk about the various stories of creation found around the world, but then taking some advice that I've gotten from Kyle previously, I narrowed down my focus significantly and just focused on one story for, to share with you guys today. So I'm going to cover the story, the Hebrew story of creation. And I know Matthew already said it, but I'm going to try to avoid <laughs> cliches like the play. <laughs> All right, I'm going to cover a couple terms that I think are important to the story, and then I'm going to cover the story itself, and then I'm going to try to provide you with an application that I've learned from the story, and maybe it would apply to your lives as well. All right, the two terms that I think are pretty important for this story, firmament, which I'll go into a little de more detail than just this guy, and then there's a literary structure called a chiasm, which comes into play for this story. And it's also used in a lot of ancient stories, and it's kind of a way, an easy way for people to remember a story. All right, so the term firmament comes from the ancient idea that the blue sky above us was really full of water, and there was this protective barrier that prevented all that water from coming and crashing down on top of us. And then, obviously, there's water below. People knew that there were oceans and seas, so they believed that there was the separation between waters above and waters below. All right, the literary term chiasm, it's also sometimes called an inverted parallelism, for all you English buffs. <laughs> this is one form of the way it works. Um, the structure goes A, so A, B, and C represent a word from the story or an idea that's conveyed in a passage. And the idea of the chiasm is those initial parts of the story get repeated later on in the story, and it kind of makes it easier for you to remember. So there are two kind of general formats. This one, ABC, ABC, and then there's ABC, CBA. And they both are kind of reflected in the middle. And that middle point is kind of a key in a lot of the stories, and it kind of it conveys this hidden treasure that the author is trying to convey to the audience. So I marked it with a X, just like the treasure map. In the beginning, God is the way that this story starts off. So God is the main character, and throughout the story, he's he's separating things and he's creating. And at the beginning, it says that the earth was formless and void. The Hebrew word for this is tohu wabohu, which is really fun to say. <laughs> if you guys would say it with me once. Tohu wabohu. Yeah. So the way that I heard it explained was this chaotic nothingness. If you took nothing and you put it into a blender and cranked the blender <laughs> up all the way, this is what you would get, just chaotic nothingness doesn't really make sense, but it's kind of a cool picture. So in the story, day one is light and darkness are created or separated. Uh, and at the end of day one, it says it was good. On day two, here's where the firmament comes into place. The waters are separated. Uh, the waters above the firmament, firmament and then the waters below the ocean. On day three, the land is separated from the seas, and then also plants are added to the land. And it says at the end of day three, it was good. So the first three days are kind of about separating things from one another. Day four, the sun, the moon, and stars are created in this Hebrew story of creation. And then it said, uh, and it was good. On day five, the fish and the birds are created and it is said, it is good. On day six, the animals are created to fill the earth, and then people are created. And it was good. Actually, it was very good for day six. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the last three days of this story, or days four, five, and six, are about filling what was separated in the first three days. And if you look at the story, it kind of fits into that chiastic structure, which I showed. So for day one, the light and the darkness is kind of reflected in the sun, the moon, and the stars, how the earth rotates and this 
and our days and our years are created through them. Day five, the fish fill the waters, obviously, and the birds fill the, the skies above. Day six has the animals filling the land and obviously people as well. So it fits that ABC, ABC pattern. And you might ask, what, what is found in the center of this story? Maybe some buried treasure. So at the center of this whole story is the word Moab, Moad. I'm not sure of the pronunciation. But this is the Hebrew word, and here is where the application comes in. Uh, the passage from the story goes, and let them be for signs and for seasons, which is the word Moad, and for days and for years. And in other translations that I kind of saw along the way are sacred times, which is words, seasons, or moan. And that transitioned into the idea of Sabbath, like a seventh day where you're resting um, and not working. And, and rest seems to play a very important role in the story. Because we haven't covered the seventh day yet. So for the seventh day, it says, and God rested on the seventh day from all his work. And so... When I, what I've, what I've gathered from listening to other people tell this story and from reading myself, is kind of an application that I would like to leave you guys with and consider as you go. So, our value is not determined by the amount of work we do throughout the day or throughout our lives, but rather by simply being humans. And I think being human is uh, incredibly important and something to be valued. So, with that. My last application. Is, I know I already broke the barrier between religion, and so I thought I might add a little politics in there too. But here are my sources, and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Fellow Toastmasters, welcome guests, but most especially Gordon. Certainly not under the weather with today's topic. He was to present a story, either established, fictional, or personal, and make it connect to the club, to the audience. I think he did a very fine job of that. He started with power. He stood right here and powerfully complimented a member of the club, a member of the audience, who just also happened to be his evaluator, which was clever <laughs> on, several, on several levels. <laughs> you could have included a few more people, but I was thrilled that you chose me. He stated, tweet others as you want to be tweeted. That's going to stick with me. I just thought that was so sweet. <laughs> he reminded us at the end and somewhat through his speech that the point of his discussion that was a sort of biblical in a way was the value of human beings. He went through those days with the highlight and he stated being day six when you've got people and animals, finally. To give him some further re reference back to Kyle later on, ditch the words. You had a lovely PowerPoint opportunity where I think if you would have neglected every single word and put pictures instead, rather than telling us showing us the words you were telling us, that was something that left me staring at that and not at you, and you were right in front of me. Also, that kept you, with the clicking, from walking around and doing this. Day one, this happened. Day two, that happened. Day three, this happened. Day four, that happened. Day five, that happened. And day six, this happened. <laughs> Just something to remember that your ob obje objective here is to speak, not to show us words on the PowerPoint, because that is sort of 
dare we call it, death by PowerPoint. But fabulous, you're always wonderful, you light up our, our world when you speak, it's always fun, but move around, do that. I can't wait for your next speech, and I know there will be less words and more talking. Thank you for